Hi guys, this is my new Fuji X-T4. Let's go and find out what it's like for wildlife photography. Well, here we go. Well, hello to you all. Um, this is a review of the Fuji X-T4, but specifically for wildlife photographers. This video will be helpful, maybe I hope, to those who are already part of the Fuji brand who are looking to possibly upgrade to the Fuji X-T4, whether it's worth it from the X-T3 um, or the X-H1 even for wildlife photography. Uh, also for those looking in as well, whether you would consider Fuji for your wildlife photography and at the end I'll do a few ramblings of what my thoughts about Fuji in the future for wildlife photography. This isn't a in-depth review, it's my thoughts after having this camera um, just over a month and shooting a lot of wildlife uh, with it so far. Obviously during Covid I've had a bit more time to get out there and do some wildlife photography. Just so you know my background. Um, I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker, I uh, work for a, a large school as a visual media technician and a large charity as a visual media producer. Uh, my background is uh, portraiture, weddings, corporate events, um, landscape, architecture, all that kind of stuff. Done it for years, started in film back in the day, showing my age. Um, but I also run this freelance business alongside my other two part-time jobs. Um, and I get a lot of use out of the Fuji gear and transition from Fuji gradually uh, when the first X camera came out, the X Pro one, and uh, transitioned from Canon to, to Fuji and just keep on loving the system, love how compact it is. Um, but I want to specifically aim at wildlife photography today. Wildlife photography is something that I had a passion for as a young child. I uh, wasn't always able to do it much of it because I couldn't afford the gear. Um, but the last two years I've decided to take it, take it up again and really pursue it a bit more as a passion project. And I'm really loving it. It's something that I really enjoy doing. Take a look at my Instagram if you want to see any of my, any of my work. So let's go for a list of thoughts I have um, using this Fuji X-T4. Firstly, um, the obvious thing, the difference is with the X-T4 you have uh, the image stabilizer. Now then, the image stabilizer for anybody who's doing hybrid shooting like I do, um, if you're shooting wildlife, um, and you're doing mostly stills, but occasionally you want to do a few video clips, the image stabilizer is superb, especially if you're doing a lot of handheld work. You can get some slow video clips, even slow panning as well. 
which stabilizes your video clips. So if you're shooting the X-T3 um, and you're wondering about the upgrade, if you're hybrid shooting, I think the image stabilizer alone is a massive bonus, massive plus, unless you're always on the tripod, which is very unlikely if you're doing wildlife photography. The, the number of actuations on the shutter life on the X-T4 is twice as long as the X-T3. So the X-T3 has 150,000 actuations. This one's made for 300,000 cycles. So that's pretty good. So it's kind of a, a long, a long lasting shutter in the camera, which is always a bonus. Um, the other thing I really love about the design of the ergonomics of this camera is how they've changed the, uh, the mode button here from stills to movie. Sometimes when your eyes are up to the camera and you haven't got time to look back, even using the useful touch screen maybe, sometimes you haven't got time to do that. You want to be able to just switch from video to stills while your eye is up, um, which is brilliant because before it was on here and there's loads of other functions on here. Sometimes you're trying to hunt for this movie mode on the left here while it's, while it's up to your eye. It's, you could probably get used to doing it to the far left where, where the movie mode was, but when you're trying to get back to stills again, I always used to miss it, go back on bracketing or CH, the wrong, the wrong mechanism, but now it's so much easier, much more simpler. That is definitely a win for me, stills and movie switch on the back. Superb for uh, hybrid shooters. Big one is the battery life. Obviously, uh, Fuji have put a new, bigger battery in this system. I'm gonna try and get it out. So these are chunkier batteries. Um, they last longer, obviously they need more power to have the extra draining power from the image stabilizer as well. But to me, they're lasting about a third longer, if not more actually. Um, when I've got two batteries in the grip and a battery in the camera, I don't have to bring any spares at all for like a day's shooting, which is superb. I just can forget about it, not worry about it. The booster grip has been great. It's a bit bigger because the batteries have to go in horizontally, uh, but that's not a big deal for me being a bit bigger. It has to go in that way rather than the flat way. So you've got a big beefy grip to grab hold of. And if you're a big lens shooter for wildlife, this is the biggest lens that Fuji do, the 200 or even the 300, uh, sorry, the 100 to 400. Uh, the extra grip is a good thing in that sense. Uh, also on the actual body without the grip, there is um, more grip to get hold of as well. So even if you don't use the grip, the size of the, the grip is bigger, which is great as well. If you don't like using boosters, uh, booster grips on your camera. That's a massive plus as well. Just a little note on the um, battery grip, you've got three modes there, normal economy and boost, uh, saving power modes basically. Always have it on boost for wildlife anyway, because often you're just waiting for the moment, you need the camera to react extremely quickly. Uh, so I'll leave it on there, but it's useful to have a switch on the back there as well. Let's go on to the next thing. Oh yeah, a useful thing that is when you're charging uh, the, the camera um, with the USB, uh, it now, if you've got the grip on, it now charges all three, all three batteries. The two in the grip, one in the, in the body, so you don't have to pull one out again and charge it again. Although I have purchased the separate charger with this camera, uh, just in case there's any dodgy electricity in, in any houses that can kind of make the camera um, circuit board go some reason but it's useful to know that you can charge all three batteries just from one charger into the into the USB-C type and it charges all three which is really good function that Fuji put in there. One of the big things that I really love about the Fuji X-T4 for wildlife photography is the new mechanical shutter. Now the electronic shutter has always been superb on the X-T3 I think it's brilliant and it's the same as the X-T4 obviously for wildlife that's really good but sometimes you want to use mechanical shutter because uh, even though the rolling shutter is maintained very really well on the electronic shutter on the X-T3 and the X-T4, sometimes you do get a bit of jello effect with certain rapid movements. And the mechanical shutter is so quiet, um, it just is a pleasure to use. I'll fire a few off. That's near my microphone, so you can probably hear that whispering mode there. That's a mechanical shutter. Um, I love the fact that this shutter is so quiet, so dampened. Not only does it reduce shutter shock, but obviously for wildlife, that's really key. And I've been shooting some, uh, some foxes. Uh, some of them do hear the foxes because they have amazing hearing uh, if you're close. Um, but from a distance, there's a bit of wind in the background that doesn't hear it. And obviously for birds and things, it's just really quiet anyway. Um, but really like that about the X-T4. The, the dampened shutter is a massive bonus for wildlife photographers.
just to also mention the the manual shutter can shoot 15 frames a second so that's a one up that's a few up on the xt3 that's a bonus as well having a few more uh frames per second with wildlife photography so when it takes some time to get the action get the moment so that's that's great as well one other little function that i really like on the xt4 um, is the command setting here on the iso dial and the reason i like that is i generally shoot manual all the time uh, with the fuji system because it's so quick to respond through the electronic viewfinder to get your manual exposure correct but sometimes when the light is in and out all the time or you're photographing in the woods when there's a lot of sunlight and shade sometimes i do switch to auto iso and the reason it's good to have that command switch there is um, i keep it on command all the time generally rather than twizzling these iso buttons because when you've got a big lens you can't let go of this you don't want to hold this this um, camera body, this lens, and the weight of the, the lens on the on the body, because put pressure on the mount. So you don't want to start twiddling with these ISO buttons while you're trying to shoot an animal. And um, so I always have it set to the, the front command and the back command. And um, before you had to re reassign the auto ISO setting for the XT3 uh, to alter the ISO for the command of the front button. But now there's a command button dedicated there. You can actually still have auto ISO at your fingertips quickly if you want and have that as a command uh, for your ISO setting with the front command here and the shutter with the back. I, I tend to put it on T when I've got big lenses because you, you don't want to be twiddling with the, the dials here. You want it to be able to control everything through the viewfinder as you go and just means you don't have to have it like the X-T3. So you have to reassign the auto ISO button but now you can actually put it on the command and you can change your ISO from the front here which is really practical because it means you've got that function and you've got the auto ISO quickly if you really want to go to auto ISO, um, which is superb, love that. Also, um, another interesting observation is when I used to have an auto ISO with the X-T3, it didn't display my ISO uh, setting for the viewfinder when I had an auto ISO, what I was, what I was going to shoot it at. Uh, but that's a funny thing, it didn't do that. Um, hopefully it will do it on an upgrade, a firmware upgrade, but it does on the X-T4, so it shows your uh, ISO um, when you're an auto ISO with the X-T4, which is common sense, really. Just another point is the, the focus The focus point in the camera can go down to a really small square, as on the X-T3, but um, you can't on the, the filming with X-T3 on the video, but now you, you can with the X-T4, so the focus point square will go really small for video as well. They could change that on a firmware upgrade, hopefully for X-T3 users, but really useful for filming. Uh, one big thing, um, is obviously the, the flip screen. So this was hotly debated, um, obviously because of so much vlogging going on nowadays and video work, uh, very handy for people who are doing a, mixed, a mixture of video and stills. Um, I know that many people have different opinions about this. Food you can never make everyone happy because there's always, uh, some people who prefer the traditional flip out screen with the, with the vertical um, function, but actually you can do the vertical function like this quite easily as well on this camera. Um, on the whole, because of what I do, I do a bit of video, quite a bit of video as well. Um, I do like the flip screen that goes fully out because I can do um, to camera work on video. But also another thing I really actually like is to be able to put the, the LCD screen away. Um, I actually love shooting without the LCD here. Sometimes you get grease on the screen and if you're in an environment where it's raining a lot or you're well likely to whack it, walking through some woods or just being rough with the camera, as you do with wildlife photography sometimes, I actually love folding this away and uh, just using my electronic viewfinder as my preview, um, which is more accurate anyway, especially if you're in bright sunlight, it's more accurate to look through the viewfinders. For me, it's a good option to be able to have that to be stacked away like that, just more robust in that sense. So I actually prefer it, but I know that people will differ on that one. So the, the camera is also, um, capable of 240 frames per second video uh, slow-mo at HD, which is pretty amazing. I did do some test footage, not a lot, but, and I found that it was, it was, it was fine. It was okay for like general fun use and uh, just experimenting with slow motion, but I did see a bit of more uh, kind of artifacts in that uh, the quality dropped a bit from the 120p slow-mo HD. So I'd, I'd probably stick to 120 and use the 240 if I really wanted to uh, get something dramatic but wasn't too ultra um, concerned about the high quality. Um, I tend to like shooting 4K 60p and slowing it down but obviously you sometimes need it a bit slower than that. 
but that's not a massive selling point for me anyway but not a big deal but still fun to use for certain moments i've also um, found that the the focus has been uh, quicker um, as well which is obviously the fuji have improved the focus speed uh, they may improve that on xt3 with firmware upgrades i'm not sure but they won't do it quickly i would have thought because they need to sell more xt4s um, but it has been quicker and actually it's been much more responsive in lower light down to minus six ev apparently with those phase detect um, points for autofocus in low lights so i found it superb actually photographing foxes at dusk i've got a few samples that will come up on the video so what about the uh, future for fuji and wildlife photographers um, for me i think they obviously need to bring out some more great prime lenses like the 200 millimeter here um, they need some longer reach for sure um, the 100 to 400 is a good zoom i love this zoom it's really great and i don't want to complain too much about it but at the 400 end it's sharp but it's not super sharp like this amazing prime here uh, this prime produces incredible sharpness and rendition of detail and at the 400 end on this one it does need stopping down to at least 6.3 to maintain some more details i find um, and sharpness in comparison uh, to the, the 200 millimeter prime um, there have been some leaked patent uh, designs by Fuji of a 500 millimeter 5.6 DO lens and a 300 millimeter f4 DO lens. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, they're diffractive optic lenses, which means they can build a prime lens not so big as this. Um, the elements in the lens allow the design to be a lot smaller. There's a Nikon 500 PF lens, which you can see as an example online if you search that. It's hand-holdable, portable, but an incredible reach. Uh, incredible for bird photography and wildlife photography if you need that extra reach. I find, to be honest, at the 400 millimeter end, um, I'm still needing to crop. Um, 400 millimeter on an APS-C camera is 600 millimeter on a uh, full frame equivalent. Um, but I still am finding a lot of time needing to crop in quite a lot. Um, I think APS-C is a sweet spot for wildlife photography. Um, it's got good ISO performance. Okay, you may not be quite as good as full frame, um, but the size of the the design of the camera and the lenses don't have to be so big. And I think a PF lens or a DO lens of 500 millimeter would be the equivalent of a 750 millimeter on an APS-C camera like the Fuji, which would be incredible to have as a, as a partner with this amazing 200 millimeter. Or if you, if they bring out the, the 300 F4 as well, those two together would be brilliant for wildlife photography. Um, I think it'd be great if they could do that, but obviously it's difficult at the moment with the economic climate with COVID and they can't take too many risks. Um, obviously there's not many sports events going on, so for sports photography it's not such a big um, pull for Fuji to bring them out yet. But for wildlife photographers, especially those who find it good for their mental health at the moment, getting out um, into nature, enjoying nature is superb for people's mental health. And I think if they bought like the 500mm out, um, that would be very appealing to wildlife photographers, especially someone like me, who does a lot of bird photography as well. Um, that would be incredible to be able to walk around with a 500mm, 5.6, 750mm uh, equivalent lens, um, hand-holdable, portable. That would be supreme for wildlife photography. So I hope they can bring it out. We'll see. I can't complain with the, the kit I've got at the moment anyway. It's superb stuff. Um, what about the future for the next Fuji X-H1, so X-H2? I'm guessing that there's rumors they might bring it out in the some point in the new year. Um, what could they do to that camera to improve it for wildlife photographers? Um, I think the build quality of the X-H1 is great, what it's made of. Um, there's a big debate, I guess, about whether they should have an inbuilt grip on the X-H2. Obviously, sports photographers, wildlife photographers, generally don't want to be fussing around with another um, accessory that comes on and off the camera. On occasions, on all my battery grip cameras, occasionally I have to just tighten these up occasionally after a while because they get a bit loose. Um, I think there's a, a mixed debate about this. Obviously we have a battery grip on it permanently. If it's part of the actual unit, it's going to be bigger. But if you're shooting sport or wildlife, you're going to want more grip anyway for big, big lenses. So it's a difficult one. I'm undecided whether they should make an uh, integrated grip or not or whether they should have it separate i think on the whole i think an integrated grip would be better for wildlife photographers and sport photographers um, but i know some people will differ on that especially if you've got a smaller 
a DO lens or a PF lens where you may not need such a big grip because it's a smaller lens. But for me, obviously, having um, more durability um, just with wildlife and less, less uh, gaps to let the rain seep into and other weather seal, but not, there's always some compromise somewhere when you have to build another part of the camera body. And also, they need to make this, on the X-H2, they need to make this flippy screen out of more solid material, uh, more robust material, and also these little ports where the USB-C attachments go in, they can make that more solid as well, so it's just uh, more um, durable. Sony have, uh, uh, will be making more sensors and there's a 43 megapixel uh, square pixel sensor that's been patented, um, which could come in the X-H2, but it's been rumored to. Uh, that would be superb. It's always good to have some more um, resolution, but not the expense of ISO low light performance. And I think, uh, I think a square pixel sensor design will, would make that possible. And it's always good to be able to crop a bit more with wildlife photography. Um, but as I say, I think, the 500mm lens for me, uh, that DO lens, would be extremely um, useful for me alongside this 200mm and I look forward to the time they may bring it out. They may not bring it out, but I hope they do. And um, let's see what uh, the future brings for Fuji and wildlife photography. Hope that was interesting and helpful for you. Um, stay safe everyone and uh, God bless.